Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part 3 of Direwolf20's Mod Spotlight, covering Actually Editions. Um, the last two episodes have covered some of the basics of Actually Editions and how to get started, and then we looked at a lot of the different blocks that are available that do a bunch of cool stuff. Today's episode, uh, we'll cover the items. There's a handful that do use RF and a handful that don't, and then we'll take a look at some of the miscellaneous stuff that we haven't had a chance to look at, and then wrap up the series. Alright, let's get started. So let's start with items that don't use RF. So there are two sacks that are available to you, the Traveler's Sack and the Void Sack. Let's take a look at them. First, the Traveler's Sack. Basically, it's an item storage system. Neat. Little thing you can carry around, put items in, get items out whenever you want. Super fancy, super straightforward. Um, if you turn on Auto Insert, what that means is that any items picked up in the world will automatically go into the bag instead of into your inventory. Straightforward and cool. There's also a filter option on the right hand side here. You can filter items so that, for example, if we set it to whitelist cobblestone, only cobblestone will be picked up and placed into your knapsack um, rather than going into your inventory. But anything else that's not cobblestone won't. So pretty straightforward, respecting metadata, MBT, and or dictionary. And you can obviously put item filters in there if you so choose. The void sack has a very similar UI, except only has one slot, and any items that go inside the void sack are voided. The name is pretty intuitive. Um, so we can filter it for cobblestone only with a whitelist. We'll set auto insert on. Now any cobblestone I pick up will simply be voided. Doesn't go in my inventory, doesn't go in the bag, it's just destroyed. Pretty cool. Next up, wings of the bats. You're going to get these bats wings, which are typically dropped from bats when you kill them. Um, by themselves, they can't be used to fly. However, if you combine them with an empowered diamantine crystal, pretty expensive, pretty much crystal blocks, and an ender star, um, the ender star requires another star, dragon's breath, black quartz, and prismarine shard. It's basically an item that lets you fly around like in creative mode. Neat. If you like to cook up a variety of foods, you should definitely take a look at foodstuffs. Um, there's a bunch of foods listed in here that you can make with some of the resources that the mod adds. There's some new plants as well. So there's like rice and a few other things. Definitely take a look at those and uh, find some good food to make. Another one to take a look at is leaf blowers. We already kind of saw this. Um, there's the basic leaf blower and then there's the advanced leaf blower. They don't use RF and they do exactly what it says on the tin. They blow leaves. Um, so leaf blower will blow away any tall grass and leaves from the Nebra area. Neat. The advanced leaf blower is faster. Yeah. And blows away any nearby leaves as well. So, advanced leaf blower does leaves on trees, regular leaf blower just does tall grass. The player probe looks like a pretty fun little tool. Um, basically, you can use the player probe to right click on a player that you're playing with on a server and link that player to an existing in the world player interface. Do notice that when you do this, the player that you probe is going to get a notification and all they have to do is sneak to disconnect the probe from their player. So if you're quick enough, you can maybe steal some of these items but they'll definitely know what was happening. All-in-one tools, very useful little mechanics. Um, basically, it's an all-in-one tool. You combine your tools all into one. So let's take a look, all-in-one tools. Uh, there's one for pretty much every tier of item, so we can grab a diamond one to demonstrate, and these work pretty well. You can use them to break cobblestone, you can use them to dig grass, you can right-click to till the land, and some pretty cool stuff all around. If you sneak right-click with these, they'll create paths for you, which is pretty nice. And then you can also use them, of course, to chop down wood. So it's a tool that's multi-purpose, right? You can use it like any tool. It, it's the perfect tool for every job. I was lucky enough to get some worms from tilling that grand, ground over there. Worms are nice. You plant them on a single block of uh, dirt, and they'll automatically till the um, land around them in a 3x3 three three pattern. So basically, you know, 3x3 three three across and over, and it'll keep the land fertilized and tilled. And you can plant some seeds on there and they'll help the seeds to grow just a little bit faster than normal. Um, not too much faster than normal, but definitely a little bit so. And it's pretty straightforward. The only way to get the uh, worm back, by the way, is to break the block that it's on and then you get your worm back. Jams are available from villagers, so you'll find some villagers that are willing to sell you some jam. And there's a bunch of different jams that give you a bunch of different potion effects. Try them out for yourself to figure out what they are. Potion rings are pretty cool. Basically, they give you a potion effect. 
There's two versions of them, the level one version, which means you have to hold it in your hand. So for example, if we have the level one ring, and we kind of saw these a little bit earlier, notice that I don't have the speed effect right now. If I'm holding it in my hand, I do. Nice. And then you can upgrade this guy with an Ender Star, so therefore killing the Wither, and you can get the advanced version of that ring, which works in much the same way, except you can have it anywhere in your inventory, and you get the tier two version of that speed buff. Cool. So basically, you've got a way to have potion effects on you pretty much at all times. Nice. The Spawn Changer is an interesting block, uh, or item I should say. Basically, it allows you to pick up an, a mob in the world, like so, and it kills them in the process. It now sets the Spawn Changer item to match that entity. Now, place in the crafting grid to clear the storage if you want, or right click on a mob spawner that you find in the world, and it'll set the spawner to match the type of creature you had collected and killed. Nice. Notice that the crafting ingredient for this is spawner shards, which you get when you break a mob spawner. Next up, let's take it a few items uh, that use RF. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is the drill, which is pretty much an electric version of a mining tool like a pickaxe and a shovel. So first off, the basic drill is crafted like so. You're gonna need some diamantine crystals, some coils, a drill core, some minori crystal blocks, pretty straightforward. And then you can dye your drill as much as you want with any color dye. So this doesn't really change the uh, effect of the drill, it just changes its appearance. So you can have it look, you know, whatever color you want. Uh, once you've got your drill, you're gonna to wanna to place it inside one of the energizers and charge it up. Hooray! Once the drill is charged, you can use it pretty much like a pickaxe or a shovel. So it'll break dirt just fine, and it'll break stone just fine. The cool thing about drills is they can be upgraded. Shift right click to install upgrades. There are five upgrade slots in here, and there are many more than five upgrades available. Uh, there's drill speed augments. So let's take a look at these. They do exactly what you might expect. They speed up your drill. So for example, here's what breaking blocks without drill speed augments looks like. And here's what it looks like with a tier one augment. Nice. If you want to install the tier two augment, you must leave the tier one augment in there. Without the tier one augment inside, it won't work. But if you have both in there, it'll definitely be faster. And of course, the dual three augment makes things even faster than that. Nice. There's a Silk Touch augment that does pretty much exactly what you would think. It gives you the Silk Touch ability. There are two tiers of uh, Fortune Augment. Fortune Augment 1 and Fortune Augment 2, which you'll see on the tooltip, gives you Fortune 3. So by installing these in here and mining something that applies to Fortune, like Redstone Ore, you'll get a benefit of the Redstone. Nice. There are also Mining Augments. So the number 3 Mining Augment goes ahead and clears a 3x3 three three area for you. Awesome. And the level five mining augment clears, as you might expect, a five by five area. Awesome. So you can use this to upgrade your drill and mine faster and further. Next up, we've got the drill block placing augment. Simply hold it in your hotbar and right click while in that slot. You'll notice that it did a little movement there. What it did is assigned that drill block placing augment to slot number five. Now, when we go ahead and place inside here, whenever you right click with the drill, it'll place a block from that slot. So you specify which slot you want to place items from and you have no problem doing it. Nice. You should note that uh, if you've got the upgrade that allows you to mine in a larger area and you hold shift, you won't mine in that larger area. It'll still mine just one block at a time. So drills are pretty cool. You're definitely gonna have to decide which upgrades you like and which ones you wanna use. Do you wanna have fortune? Do you wanna have speed? Do you have a larger radius? Keeping in mind, of course, that every time you use the drill upgrades, you have to have the prior tier. Like I said, if you want drill augment three, you've gotta have one and two in there as well. The final thing you can put in here as an upgrade is batteries. So we mentioned batteries briefly, but throwing uh, some, some batteries inside the drill will increase the total available charge. So right now it's got 482,000 out of 500,000 RF. We throw a battery in there and you'll see now that uh, it can hold more charge. So like if it was a fully charged battery, for example, 500,000 out of 500,000 RF. Cool. And uh, when we mine stuff, The drill's not losing RF, the battery is. Sweet. 
Speaking of batteries, they do exactly what you would expect them to do. They can hold RF, and you can also hold them in your hand, and you can sneak right click them to set them to discharge mode, meaning it'll charge other items in your inventory. So let's demonstrate. I've taken the battery out of my drill, which means that when I break items, the drill itself will lose RF. Now when I place a battery in my inventory and shift right click it, it'll start glowing, indicating that it's in discharge mode, and it'll automatically refill the drill. Awesome. And if I were to get a new drill, it would refill that one as well. There are several tiers of batteries as we saw before, 1 million, 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, and 16 million RF storage respectively. Next up is a nifty device called the handheld filler. It lets you fill uh, areas of the world. Simply shift right click to specify which block you want to fill with. So in this case I did sand, or you could shift right click on a cobblestone to do cobblestone. Then all you got to do is click and hold, and release. And it'll fill the area that you click to. This can either be a straight line, or a plane, or even a cube if you want. So if we wanted to fill up to here, we could hold shift right click and all the way up to here. Of course it'll use items from your inventory, so make sure you have enough cobblestone in your inventory to fill up the whole cube, but yeah, that's pretty cool. The teleport staff is a nifty little item. It lets you teleport. Works pretty much like you would expect. Right click on a block in the distance and teleport to it. Sweet. Has a little bit of a cooldown before you can use it again, so keep that in mind. Once it's back up on your screen, you can use it. Nice. Notice if you don't actually click on a block, it'll just teleport you forward a set number of spaces. Um, you can't be looking too high for this though. It won't work if you're looking upwards. I think the maximum angle that it says in the book is about five degrees. So make sure that you're looking pretty much straight forward and then you'll teleport forward. The Ring of Magnetism. When it's charged in Energizer and inside your inventory, it uses RF to suck up items that are further away than you can normally pick them up. So it's basically a magnet ring. Let's give it a try. Ring of Magnetism, have it in your inventory. Drop items on the ground, and we'll see if they get sucked up. Yeah, they do. Nice. Decent range on it. There you go. The Ring of Growth is a pretty nifty little device. Again, it needs to be charged with RF, and it'll use a decent amount. Simply holding it in your hand and being near crops will help them to grow. Sweet. Actually helps them grow quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't have too long of a range, as we can see. Um, so it's really the plants that are right next to you. It's basically like a watering can, if you think of it that way. Um, looks like it's a little bit faster, but it also uses RF. So a good balancing point there. Decent amount of RF, too. The Ring of Liquid Banning. This is a pretty neat device. Uh, when it's in your hand, it'll automatically remove liquids nearby. Cool. That's pretty neat. Water, of course, um, will refill itself based on just simple water mechanics. Um, but if it's a single block of water, for example, it'll be gone for good. And the same with lava. And that does it for all the items that use RF. The next thing I want to show you guys is one of the blocks that I skipped earlier on was the coffee maker. Because this is a little bit more complex, and you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with it. The first thing you want to do is make a coffee maker. Then you're going to put water in it. Then you're going to get yourself an empty cup, which isn't too hard to make. Finally, you need to look around in the wild and find yourself some coffee beans. Hooray! Coffee beans uh, can be picked up, and uh, you can also plant them back on uh, grass. If you look in here, you'll see coffee has uh, some seeds as well. So you'll find those in the wild from knocking down tall grass and stuff. And you'll also find um, some coffee plants that are just kind of floating around. So grab those coffee beans, plant them, grow them, and get yourself uh, some more coffee beans. And then just place them in there. You'll notice that you'll need uh, a decent amount of coffee beans to fill up the internal buffer here. Um, and in total, you need 15 coffee beans per cup of coffee. So once you've got your empty cup, your coffee beans, and your water, you can go ahead and brew yourself a cup of coffee. Um, you'll notice that when you hit OK, it's going to start brewing. Nice. If you click here for show recipes, you can see all the different recipes that are available. Um, there's a bunch of different items that you can add to the right hand side here to make your coffee have different effects. So once this brewing effect is complete, we'll be able to try that out. Nice. So 113 of the 128 coffee that we had before is gone. Cup with coffee, no effects. So this simple cup of coffee doesn't really do much, except feed you, which is nice. And it also has a little bit of a durability bar here. 
So let's make a better cup of coffee, shall we? So let's get another empty cup and throw some stuff in there. When we put items in here, you'll see that it has some more effects. So for example, if we put sugar in here, right? We'll just put one in the first slot. Neat. What that does, according to the book, is give you speed one for 30 seconds. Cool. Now, if we throw another piece of sugar in there, we might get speed two or speed three. If you put creamer in there, the effect of having milk inside there says that um, it adds two minutes to all effects of items and slots with lower numbers, but it'll also remove one amplifier. So it reduces it by one. Um, and if the amplifier effect is one, it'll completely remove the potion. So let's see what happens if we put three pieces of sugar and some milk in there. Neat, it gives you speed two for two minutes and 30 seconds. I had one piece of milk, right? So that was giving me a two minute buff and it reduced one of the levels of speed. Now, when I drink my coffee, I get speed two for two and a half minutes. Awesome. And you can combine multiple things. So for example, we could throw another empty cup in there and we can throw, let's say, a couple blaze powder, a magma cream, a couple gas tears, and a couple puffer fish in there, why not? And uh, we'll see what we get. Oh, you know what? Let's throw a piece of uh, sugar in there. I'm not gonna have any cream in there, so this is gonna be a short duration. Um, if I had put sugar in there, or if I had put cream in there, it would have completely eliminated the magma cream and the sugar effects because it would be minus one on those. Keep in mind that the milk or creamer um, reduces the items that are uh, behind it, right? So if I put the milk in slot three, anything before it would have a longer duration but weaker and anything in front of it in slots four through eight would not be affected. Oh man, I got a cup of speed one, regeneration two, fire resistance one, strength two, and water breathing two. Not bad. Nice. So coffee's pretty cool. You can use it to mix and match potions and pretty much have any variants of potion effects on you at any given time. And you can adjust it based on the ingredients you put in there. Pretty neat little device. Under the miscellaneous section, there's a couple nifty little things here. We already checked out worms and what they do and how they work. And additional banners. If you're a person who likes to play with banners, there's some banner stuff in there as well to check out. There's also some decorative blocks. So for example, um, you can convert a block of quartz into aesthetic quartz. Um, and uh, you can also turn chisel quartz blocks into aesthetic green blocks. So some cool decorative stuff. Um, there's also some quartz-like things for stairs and slabs and all that kind of good stuff. Black Quartz also has a block version of itself and a pillar version, so that you can go ahead and use that for some decorative stuff. There's also the Smiley Cloud. Let's give the Smiley Cloud a little bit of love. So uh, simply place it in the world, and he chills there in his Smiley. You can right-click him to give him a name. Nice! Let's name him Etho. Haha! <laughs> he gets some cool redstone effects. So there's a couple little Easter eggs for the Smiley Cloud. He's just a friend little guy. Those of you who checked out my Let's Play series noticed that I immediately fell in love with Tiny Coal because it's amazing. I always get yelled at for wasting coal. Tiny Coal, when you place it in a crafting window by itself, turns into Tiny Coal. And you can also use it, eight of them, to turn it back into normal coal. What does this do? Well, those of you who are familiar with Minecraft mechanics know that it takes um, a single piece of coal in a furnace can smelt eight items. A single piece of Tiny Coal in a furnace can smelt one item. So if you need to smelt one piece of cobblestone and you don't feel like wasting an entire piece of coal to do that, go ahead and get yourself the tiny coal and it'll use exactly one piece of tiny coal to smelt the one item that you're smelting. It has a 1 8 burn time, so you can also use this in, for example, coal generators to get smaller amounts of power. Neat. There are several versions of lamps, one for each color in the Minecraft rainbow, so orange and cyan and etc. And uh, they do exactly what you might expect. You simply right click them with an empty hand to turn them on and off. And they emit light. So if it were nighttime, you would see this emitting light. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Um, one of the neat things about this though, is you can control them with a redstone signal, not directly, but by using a lamp controller. So if we placed a lamp controller in the world like so, and then gave that lamp controller a redstone signal, it would turn on and off the lamp. The extra cool part about this is it also turns on any lamps that are touching that lamp or further lamps. So it can control all kinds of different lamps. Pretty cool. Treasure chests are randomly found in water biomes and uh, simply right click on them to retrieve the items that they have. Don't break them though, or you won't get anything. 
Another nifty uh, addition to the world are lush caves. When you go exploring in caves, you might find some underground areas with trees and grass and some other cool stuff. Sometimes you'll even find treasure hidden in the trees. Several people have messaged me saying, why am I finding uh, underground caves with some grass and trees growing in them? This is why. If you're the type of person that likes to tame cats in Minecraft, occasionally you might see your cat spitting up a ball of fur. Uh, you might think that's kind of gross until you realize that cats get all kinds of nifty stuff that they find. And when you right click the ball of fur, you might wind up with a random item. Sweet. While exploring in the world, you'll probably find some black lotus flowers. These are pretty nice because they're a nifty way to get black dye without having to go hunting for squid. An early game way of getting uh, some water is getting a bowl. So all you need to do is right click on some water in the world with a bowl and you can pick up water and place it in the world. Nice. Probably wouldn't want to recommend doing that with lava, but uh, totally works with water. And finally, we've got the tiny torch. Simply get a stick and one of those pieces of tiny coal or tiny charcoal and you'll get two tiny torches. Sweet. Works and acts just like a torch, just looks a little bit shorter. It's tiny. Finally, the last chapter in the book is a list of everything where you can see all the items that are available to you. And you can also obviously have a search bar over here. So if you want to look up items, shouldn't be too hard. Neat. And I think guys, that about wraps up the mod spotlight for actually additions. There's a lot of cool additions in this mod. We have a crazy item system, wireless transport of liquid and energy. We've got I mean, just farms, crafting, automation of all kinds, some lots of cool RF abilities. There's a bunch of like nifty little additions. So it's actually an appropriately named mod, actually additions. A lot of the blocks and devices are pretty powerful for automation. And I'm definitely looking forward to checking them out in the, in the Let's Play single player world. So I can kind of have a good idea of how this stuff all works in a legit play world. So for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out actually additions. For now, take it easy.